L'Assemblée va entendre. L'Assemblée will now, now hear the statement of His Excellency Jean Manuel Gonzalez Lorenzo, President of the Republic of Angola. I would request protocol to escort His Excellency to the podium. J'ai le grand plaisir de souhaiter. It's a great honor for me to welcome the President of the Republic of Angola, and I would now invite him to address the Assembly. Your Excellency Maria Fernanda Spinoza, President of the General Assembly of the United Nations, Your Excellency Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Distinguished Representatives of International Organizations and Bodies, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. We are holding the 73rd General Assembly of the United Nations at a special moment as we pay tribute to two great figures of world politics who happen to be two African sons, Nelson Mandela and Kofi Annan. On the day that I complete exactly one year since my inauguration to the post of the President of the Republic of Angola, on behalf of the Angolan people, I have the honor to address the, from this tribune for the first time the whole international community represented here by their highest dignitaries. I would like to salute Your Excellencies, Heads of State and Government present here, and also the leaders from various international organizations and bodies, because I consider you to be the direct laborers for the future of our planet. I would like to seize this sovereign opportunity to thank all of the international community for the support rendered to the cause of peace and national reconciliation in my country, Angola. A special thank goes to the United Nations organization itself, whose role was decisive for the achievement of long-lasting peace in Angola through UNIVIM and MANUA peace missions and the important work undertaken by its specialized agencies, namely UNICEF and the World Food Programme. We also believe that Angola's experience in peace building and reconciliation between the warring forces has been a positive example for the United Nations in a sense that it has allowed to draw useful conclusions on how to approach peace processes in other regions of the world. Angola has a unique experience in terms of how to preserve and maintain long-lasting peace and constant deepening of national reconciliation, social inclusion, mutual forgiveness and healing of wounds from an armed conflict which ended almost 16 years ago. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is at this broad forum where we find ourselves that best solutions and to the current serious problems and conflicts that may hinder survival of humanity itself are discussed and resolved. I'm referring to hunger and misery which affect millions of citizens in the world, global warming and its consequences, mass migrations, uh, mainly illegal migration, traffic in narcotics, traffic in human beings, children, women for forced prostitution, religious intolerance and extremism, terrorism, interethnical armed conflicts and war among nations, or even the uncontrolled proliferation of nuclear weapons. Established 73 years ago with the declared intention of restoring universal peace and harmony to provide equal rights to big and small nations and to establish a world of cooperation, progress and well-being, the United Nations Organization is still far from achieving the goals enshrined in its charter. While it is true 
that right after its establishment, the immediate bipolarization of the planet into antagonistic political and economic systems did not contribute to easy enforcement of principles that favor the wake of peace and international security, it would be unfair to deny that the UN has played an important role in bringing colonialism to an end, promoting human rights, boosting international development cooperation, management and control of hot sport of instability worldwide. Despite the progress met so far, we need to acknowledge the old prevailing conflicts yet to be solved, such as the Israel-Palestine conflict in the Middle East, the resolution of which will only be achieved through a solution based on, on two states living side by side peacefully, as advocated by the United Nations and the overwhelming majority of its member states. We welcome the endeavors that have been made by the United States of America, North Korea, and South Korea, with the contribution of the People's Republic of China towards the full denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, which has considerably eased the existing tensions that threaten to trigger a nuclear conflict that would likely be dangerous not only to that region but to international security in general. With the end of the so-called Cop War, symbolized by the fall of Berlin War in 1989, and the momentary emergence of a new political paradigm oriented towards multilateralism, the United Nations volunteered to retake its action guided towards building a peaceful world order. We do believe that with hard work from all of us we will be able to achieve such a goal. Today, in a time of an ever-increasing globalization, there is no justification for the continued proliferation of conflicts apparently without a solution of various dimensions in several parts of the world and the entire population continues suffering from their tragic consequences virtually abandoned to their fate. Therefore, there have been many voices demanding profound reforms inside the United Nations organization which is a breast of new realities whereby the emergence of new centers of economic and financial power and technological and scientific advan advancements do fully justify the refinition, the refinition of its structure and intervention mechanism as well as the enlargement of reform of its security council <coughs> in order to better represent the different geopolitical regions of our planet. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the political setup of the contemporary world where local, regional, and interstate conflicts represent international tension and threats to peace, demands the United Nations Organization to play an increasingly active role in promoting and monitoring political and social and economic democracy building processes. This is the optimal avenue for a solution to internal, ethnic, religious and interstate conflicts arising in most cases from authoritarianism, exclusion, intolerance, radicalism or interference in to internal affairs of sovereign states. The current proportion of international terrorism, transnational organized crime, illegal immigration, xenophobia, human trafficking and drug trafficking and other evils affect the quality of life of the inhabitants of the planet and demand coordination at highest level by all member states of our organization. This 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly is being held under the theme Making the United Nations Relevant to All People, Global Leadership and Shared Responsibilities for Peaceful, Equitable and Sustainable Societies. Therefore, 
the United Nations should give priority to promotion and safeguard of human human needs and strive to solve humanity's global problems such as those pertaining to security, <coughs> the environment, economic inequalities, development in order to ensure that global peace is preserved. I would please that we should adopt a decentralized scheme for the global financial system based both on promotion of trade and regional economic integration systems and the enhancement of regional financial institutions in such terms that allow for more sustainable economic development. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, throughout our history as an independent country, our collaboration with the United Nations has always been permanent in that it has allowed us today to be engaged not only in the relaunch of our economy, but also in the search for solutions for effective peace, democracy building, and development of southern and central African regions. The Republic of Angola hereby express its willingness to continue supporting all efforts to promote cooperation among nations of the whole world to consolidate peace and defense for cooperation, trade, and investment relations at bilateral and multilateral levels. Thank you very much for your attention. Of the General Assembly, I wish to thank His Excellency João Manuel Gonzalez Lorenzo, President of the Republic of Angola, for the statement just made. May I request representatives to remain seated while we greet the President of the Republic of Angola.